In the world of entertainment, YouTube is a youngin. Movies have been around for more than a century. TV has been around for your grandparents, maybe even great-grandparents, but YouTube, if it was a person, it wouldn't be old enough to vote. And yet, this video platform has become an entertainment monster. It's filled with more than 800 million videos, and 300 hours of new content are uploaded each and every minute. And you thought Netflix had a lot of stuff to watch. Hi, I'm Paul Acey, filling in for Adam Holt today on The Plugged In Show. We'll dive into this sprawling, sometimes bewildering landscape, filling you in on some of its good, it's bad, and it's ugly. Then, from this entertainment newcomer, we'll go old school and talk about a book of all things. One that our own Bob Hoos tells us you and your kids just might want to check out. And we'll close, as we often do, with Pop Culture Connection, where we all compete for fame and prizes and cry a little bit when we lose. I'm joined today by Kennedy Unthang, Kristen Smith, and Jonathan McKee. Hi. Hello. Hey, hey. All right, guys. I wanted to start off with a little bit of a question for you. We all know that YouTube is so compulsive. That's one of the problems that that comes with it, actually. Uh, The average mobile viewing experience session, uh, as they call it, it it lasts for about 40 minutes. People watch an average of 40 minutes at a time on their mobile device. Makes sense. Um, So I wanted to ask you, because I know we've probably all fallen victim to this, what YouTube hole have we all fallen into? Kennedy, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think for me, the videos that always tend to suck me in are the ones that are on those obscure topics. (laughs) Uh, Not necessarily like clickbait or anything, but it'll be like, why is the Eiffel Tower exactly this feet high? And I'm like, why is it that behind? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, yeah, the video is 30 minutes, but I mean, this is, I gotta, I, I gotta to know. know. <laughs> yeah. And so when it comes, yeah, those videos are definitely the ones that pull me in. Man, I, so I don't love YouTube. My husband, really? wa- I know, I know. <laughs> My husband watches it, like, that's his form of entertainment, but he's always learning, and that sounds exhausting to me. So if I'm on, <laughs> if I'm on YouTube, it's usually, honestly, looking up a video on, like, how to fix something if he's not going to fix it. Or if he's waited too long to fix it and I get sick of it. So then I get on YouTube and I'm like, I'm going to figure this I'm out. Pretty sure and nine times out of ten, I don't figure Kristen's it out. But I have watched an hour worth of person. videos. And so that's that. So is that like a passive aggressive thing? Do you say, you uh-huh. have not fixed this, so yeah. I am going to watch 100%, this. 100%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, probably the thing that I have fallen into the worst is, this is going to sound really cliche, but cat videos. Like, what? there was a time when, yes. I, when I pulled up. I may this judge you one, so strongly this right one now. one video it, where this cat had j- just gotten his claw stuck on some sort of spinning fan. And oh. it was really horrible and yet really funny. You watched 40 minutes of no, that? No, 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 no. What does no, that no, say no, about no. you? <laughs> no, but I, I did sort of get caught. <laughs> one of the bad oh, yeah. things about my job now is that I edit all of Kennedy's YouTube Reviews. Oh. That, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's that's not thing. a bad thing. It's a great, <laughs> great thing. But the thing is, when I read your reviews, it makes me curious about what those, what's yes. in those videos. And so yeah, exactly. I find myself, yeah. oh, this is what I'm going to do tonight. I'm going to watch these <laughs> educational videos that Kennedy told me about. <laughs> oh, and, and let's be honest. It, when you watch the video, the thing that's so hard is then in the side is something that you know. Forget the video exactly. you're watching. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's exactly. the one on the right hand side, the and, also, and it's. And it's based on something else you watch. So even if you're watching a cat video, yep. if you watched a how to bake a cake video or a workout video, <laughs> those are the two videos. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, you also you're like, what? German chocolate cake with double frosting? You can click on that and you can watch that. And then when you're watching that, you can see, what? You know, no. Melissa McCarthy works out like this? I'm curious. And boom, you click on it. Next thing you know. No, that is absolutely true. That is one of the reasons why it sucks us in. Believe it or not, there are 37 million separate YouTube channels to uh, to take part in. Yeah. And Kennedy, you have reviewed all of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> That's awesome. No, he's you... never, he hasn't slept in years. <laughs> he is quite the worker. I'll just say that. <laughs> no, yeah. I, obviously there's no way that we can see all of them, right? It, right? When you're, when we're talking about YouTube reviews are sort of a new thing for plugged in relatively newish. Uh, there's no way we can see them all, watch them all, review them all. So how do we go about sort of choosing what we're going to review? Yeah. So there's, uh, 
about five criteria that I usually think about when I'm about to pick a, a channel to review. One of them is if they've recently had like a viral video or something on the YouTube homepage. Uh, something that's going to naturally get them a lot of subs subscribers uh, because, you know, uh, that means that our audience is a lot more likely to see them too. Uh, for instance, uh, Viva La Dirt League, I reviewed their YouTube channel like three months ago. Uh, they had a huge Kickstarter that had just started around that time. And so their ads were just everywhere for their Kickstarter. And so I was like, okay, well, we got to review them. Uh, another one, uh, if they have over a million subscribers, that's definitely helpful. Uh, if they're unique, uh, you know, it's just, there's thousands of channels out there that tell you how to bake a cake. But if they tell you how to bake a cake and then they show you something as well, that's pretty cool. That's unique. That's a lot more likely to get subscribers uh, than okay. someone who's just in the masses trying to do the exact same thing. Uh, in addition, there's also, um, sorry. <clears throat> in addition, uh, if they cover a, ah, sorry. Okay. Uh, we also like to cover a wide variety. Can you of, go back to in addition? Yeah. In addition, we like to cover a wide variety of genres. So oh, still not for work, instance, if we've done a done cooking uh, YouTuber, we probably won't do another one immediately following. But if we haven't done a cooking YouTuber in a while, then we'll probably put another one up on our uh, website. And finally, uh, just general popularity. If they're kind of, there, there's some YouTubers who are pretty much household names to a lot of younger right. people now, like Mr. Beast, uh, Daily Dose of Internet, First We Feast, these kind of, you know, uh, these YouTubers, they're quite popular regardless of if their content is even considered good anymore you know uh, it's just people <laughs> people will watch because they have such a huge subscriber count yeah. that these are people that were like okay well we got to review them as well yeah, and you even review some some Christian stuff that comes yeah. along the pipe, and and so we give people a really wide variety of what's out there, or at least we try. Yeah, yeah. One of the interesting things about YouTube is that I think kids know so much more about what's on YouTube, just the breadth of what's on there, than than probably their parents do. Um, why do you think it's so popular with kids? The studies have shown that, that they would actually prefer to, to watch YouTube than, than ingest any other form of media. I think the primary thing is how charismatic a lot of these YouTubers are. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have these people who are, they come in extremely excited. And they're like, guys, guess what? I've just... I just did this thing. <laughs> and then you're like, wow, that's cool. And, and the way they speak, they speak to you as if they're talking to their own friend. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times, the, especially for a younger audience, they feel like, oh, this person, they know who I am. You know, yeah. not literally, but you, you feel that connection there. And a lot of them will even have the audience interaction in which like they'll respond to the comments or they'll, their heart, they'll, heart your comments or, or they'll even have occasionally some subscribers come onto the channel with them like in the case of mr beast he does that a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh they also you know they also cover very niche topics that i think you can't really find right. anywhere else right. uh you know if i hop onto hulu or netflix it's really based on the whim of whatever the director wanted to do but these youtubers like i can type in like if i'm super interested in a very particular video game i can type in the name of that video game and there's going to be like 30 people whose whole YouTube channel is based around playing that video game. That one video yeah. game. Yeah, and so if I'm super excited about that video game, I'm just like, wow. Yeah. I've got a guy who's dedicated to something I really like. Yeah. And you can't really find anything like that anywhere else. Yeah. Well, it feels like instant gratification times a thousand, right? Mm -hmm. like, to that regard. Like, uh, for me... And we've talked about this before, but I even feel like my attention span, I, I enjoy reading, but I don't, my attention span is like, I don't know, gone downhill. Will I watch a movie? Sometimes, but usually it's TV <laughs> because it's quicker. And unless I can it's kind Stranger of like, Things. Unless it's Stranger Things. And for some reason, like there's more happening in each episode as opposed to like an entire movie. We have to follow the plot. Well, for YouTube, right? You can just kind of like pick and choose, and usually there's not necessarily a plot. You mm -hmm. can kind of scroll through until you need to get where you want. Yeah. So to me, that seems like super easy access for kids that are just like, let's hop on and, you know, yeah. get the information yeah. I want. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and there's stability in it as well, is because most of the time these YouTube creators they aren't going to switch from what they normally make videos about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whereas, yeah. like in a sorry, 
Whereas like in a um, TV show or something, you might like season one might be completely different from season two. But then you have like this YouTuber comes along and he says, you know what? I'm going to make a channel about baking and <laughs> that's never going to change. And so if you're really into baking, you're like, hey, yeah, this is never going to switch. Right. This is great. Well, and it'll, it'll be interesting to find out if some of these uh, differences in our in our um, what we like to watch is a generational thing or an age thing because sometimes yeah. you don't mm -hmm. know until we grow up and see if they shift and it becomes a life stage thing like you know younger people might have less time and so between homework you know moments they quickly you know gravitate towards these shorter videos too. but but here's what we do know we know for a fact right now from all the recent studies that young people tend to like shorter quick videos where um, honestly, when you get to your 30s and 40s, the, the, the older you get, the longer the viewing period goes. So I don't know if that's because we're used to that and these shorter videos are such a newer thing. But I mean, it's funny. I mean, most of it, I mean, I, I'm in my 50s. All right. I'm declaring it right there. <laughs> and and yeah. the thing is, I mean, obviously, when I get onto some of these short, you know, if I watch a funny short cat video, I, you know, watch the cat video, then I'm like, oh, workout, oh, hey, oh, another cat, oh, dog, Frenchie, you know, whatever. And, I'm, I, I mean, you know, and for all I know, yeah, I'm also on 10 different Frenchie videos. I mean, it happens. It happens to all of us. But my favorite still is to sit down and watch a plot. Is that because I was raised that way? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see when G Gen Z grows up. Are they going to start wanting to settle down after work and watch a long plot more? Will it shift? Or will they stick with the short videos? And now, uh, Gen AAA, whoever's next, uh, is <laughs> is going to all of a sudden like two second videos. I don't know. It'll be interesting, honestly. <laughs> but all we know is right now they like the shorter videos. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's super interesting, Jonathan. I would agree. It, it'll be interesting to step back and see the perspective from afar as they age. Because, I mean, even as a millennial, my my husband will pull up like car videos, and I just have zero interest. <laughs> and he'll want me to like watch reviews on stuff. And it's, honestly, I'm like, if it's over two minutes, I'm not watching this. Like, <laughs> this is so boring. But if it, the quicker it canceled. is, at least for so me, what? like, I feel like, okay, then I've gotten the information, information I need canceled. and I can move on. Cool. It's almost analytical. So I, to your point, like, if they don't want to plot, welcome to YouTube. Yeah. When, yeah. when, when I think about YouTube as, as just sort of this sprawling media entity, one of the things that I think about is, yeah, it's really helpful. It can be really informative. Um, a lot of videos are fairly clean, but there's a lot of videos that are not fit oh, yeah. for children, oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the other real problem that I think parents have to watch out for is just the amount of time you spend on YouTube. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you guys think? Like, if, if a parent was in front of you, and, and Jonathan, this is a natural question for you because you talk to parents about this all the time. Um, what would you tell parents who are worried, number one, with the, with, number one, with the content, number two, with the amount of time that they're spending with YouTube? What would you say? Well, I, I think this is one of those things where our, our quick, you know, our, our reaction tends to be overreaction. So the first thing I would actually say is more of a broader, big picture thing. Looking at my own mistakes I made, I think I was very quick to overreact and sometimes just kind of bark out the, no, we're going to do this. And, and, and instead of thinking about it, instead of talking about it, instead of listening to my kid's point of view on it. So that's the first thing I'd say is, is try to turn those overreactions into interaction moments. Try to find that if, if you're, if you're bugged by how much time your kids are spending, on YouTube or something like that, instead of barking about it, instead of quickly, you know, you know, throwing down a rule, you know, instead, um, you know, hit that pause button and find a time to talk about it over dinner or over something, some other time. And, and so, so that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing is when it comes to controls, our other um, quick reaction we tend to do is we tend to try to rely on the technical controls like we yes. sit there and go oh i'm sure there's a setting that'll yeah. make this thing safe yeah and uh, in all honesty in my parent workshops and my book parenting generation screen i never ever give specific set this control setting to this set because this the second i do that it's going to change anyway these settings change all the time True. you cannot rely on them um because it's constantly changing what's more important is the kind of the, the, the broad stroke rules like no screens in a bedroom at night. You know, those are going to yeah. be so huge 
because and, and it's and even that can be tough to enforce because like we've talked about on this show before you know kids will have an old gadget that we forgot they have it's an old phone that was in a drawer but they powered it up and it's on wi-fi and they can get on the exact same apps so it is tough as parents we kind of got to be aware and stuff but as we're talking about this with our kids as as we're talking about uh what it looks like to make these good choices you know there are certain rules that are going to be really helpful one of those is hey we're just going to turn off you know gadgets us too mom and dad after 9 p.m at night or whatever we're going to pull them from the bedroom let's read let's dialogue let's get some sleep you know <laughs> and, and, and to and to have and have that and that's one of the best parental controls you can have rather than trying to constantly keep up with all these controls and not to say that there aren't good controls but just don't rely on those things yeah i would say with youtube i agree with that jonathan with youtube this the strange beast is that most times unless you have a central app where you're controlling things from which again that will change you have to go into each browser and then set restrictions um, on both your phone and your computer and if that if you think that's a pain it's because it is like for each individual browser. And so I think setting and establishing like family rules, like this is what we watch as a family. These are the things that we avoid as a family. And here's why, like my son is four and he really likes dude. Perfect. I'm totally cool with dude. Perfect. Nine times out of 10. Um, but then there's so many things like he knows he is absolutely not allowed on YouTube at all, unless we are there. But he knows how. He's very smart. He knows how to get there, like where the remote is, how to turn on the TV, how to get to YouTube. Uh -huh. And as you search, anything can pop up. And my biggest fear, honestly, is pornography. And so I'm really, really super cautious about like what he watches and when and where, to your point, Jonathan, because it's everywhere. And now, I mean... And now the issue is that you can find like hints of that, like sexualization and these seemingly innocent videos where people are just making garbage and it looks like it's marketed to kids. So as a parent, like that's something that I'm like really serious about. And he, and they have, my kids have tablets when we travel, we don't have YouTube the, cause you can have the YouTube kids app and there's a lot of g great stuff on there, but there are also videos that I would never want him right, watching, right, you know, right. And Whether that's the tricky thing about some of those things yes. is, is even if they're designed for kids, yes. there can be problems. Even in the same way that you're hoping like a TV Y show, right. Would be good for your kids. They probably might hold values that you don't agree with. And so unfortunately this is the world we live in like you have to be on top of it you really do have to know what's going on and, and that's by conversation but also at least when my as my kids are younger that's by research yeah and i think uh in terms of practical things that watchers and uh, parents of watchers uh can do in order to combat some of this uh in order to combat in order to combat some of this is uh, for watchers, uh, you know, you can always limit yourself in a certain number of ways, whether that's the amount of time you allow yourself to watch. YouTube has uh, time limits that you can put if you put on a supervised or restricted account, for instance. Uh, you could limit yourself according to the amount of videos you allow yourself to watch, or even say, hey, I'm only going to watch things from this YouTuber today, or maybe I'm only going to or I'm not going to watch anything unless it's a new video from this one YouTuber, you know. Uh, for parents, there are a few things you can do as well to help this. Uh, for instance, research uh, parental controls, both on YouTube and off. There's a lot of really good controls out there. Uh, YouTube has some, although they aren't exhaustive. For instance, they don't actually hide LGBT stuff, uh, which can be very concerning for a lot of us. Um, but we also have other things that are outside of YouTube, such as Norton I or Covenant Eyes. Those Jeff are just Johnson a couple of softwares that you can put on there that will help restrict some of those more explicit things on YouTube. In, uh, in addition, you can always restrict your child's uh, usage here. of YouTube to a family laptop or computer, okay. one that would be out in the living room or one that, like Kristen said, you're not allowed to use unless we're all in the room together. Uh, something that kind of it makes it harder for them to retreat into their bedroom with their mobile device and they're able to watch it in private rather instead if you have it out in a public area uh, that really helps to dissuade uh, looking for things that they shouldn't be looking for.
Yeah, yeah. There are some really great tools out there that people can use. Some of those programs can help, but but echoing what you said, Jonathan, I mean, the, the first and best really line of defense is, is you as a parent, you as a mom and dad, mm -hmm. you take you talking with your kids over some of these issues, you dealing with it directly because it's the relationships more than the programming that yep. can really make a difference. Uh, and you know what, uh, it, it's kind of, you know, when we're trying to keep up with these, because, you know, Kennedy said there are, there are some pretty good um, controls out there. Yeah. I just find that they change a lot. So I like the controls that are so much more, I love what Kenny said about, you know, to to a device that's used out in public, put, you know, put it to a laptop that's used in public, not to say that that laptop isn't going to somehow make it into the bedroom. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's great when kind of the rule is, hey, when we're all out here together, I, I for an example, I, when my kids were growing up, I, I had this one moment that I thought actually turned out pretty well, which was I bought each of the kids um, these kind of like docking stations that were, um, these really cool docking stations I gave one each one to my kid and said, here you go, this is for your music. And uh, and as they were all grabbing these gifts and running upstairs, I'm like, and by the way, we aren't going to do headphones in the house. And they all kind of like had these gifts in their hands and there was no time to argue. So they're like, sure. And so there it was. That was the rule. No headphones in the house. And I love that rule because it meant their music was always being played on these docking stations. It was always for all to hear. Their, what they were watching was on this. And I love it you know, just when we keep things in the light because it's when it's in darkness that we sneak and do things. That's and good, when we kind of keep everything out in the light, you know, play it loud, play it here. You know, if you're ashamed of it, we probably shouldn't be playing it. I love yeah. that line, you know, keep things in the light. That's all, that's biblical, right? I mean, I think that, that that's what we need to, to be mindful of as moms and dads or, or as, as video consumers ourselves. Just keep it all in the light. Thanks so much, guys. There it is. Okay. Ashley, you ready to do Lovely. pop culture connection? Oh, we'll man. just yeah. do that really Never quick. Thank you so much. We'll do it out of order. Yeah, don't you think? Okay. Yeah. Since everybody's in the studio, we I'll might make as well. Dog, Mr. Who's wait a little longer. Sure. Sounds good. Sorry, Bob. No worries. Thanks for being a good sport. That was all right. Yeah. Cat videos. They're so fun. The only That's thing awesome. that I literally could think of was you watching cats being tortured for 45 minutes and then so I really judged you. I, I have to say, some of those uh, some of those home improvement things, I love those things. Oh, they're good. I, uh, it's all so confusing. Some I'm like not a tools person. No, no, I'm not either. But and someday if I watch enough of those videos, I will actually learn how to do crown molding. Crown molding is very vexing. Our baseboards, okay, this is since we've had water damage two years ago, okay, and all the baseboards aren't in. So I just told my husband, I was like, I'm calling a contractor. He's like, no, no, I'll get to it. I'm like, no, no, you won't. We're not even talking about this anymore. I'm calling a contractor. <laughs> and he's like, well, you could learn how to do it. I was like, what do I look like? I'm not going on YouTube to I'm learn how to Bob do this. Vila. I know. I will not. I'll paint it. I can do that. Is Bob Vila Too even much. still around? Do you know who that is? I don't know who that is. Oh, yes, oh. this old house. Yes. This old house. Let me look that up. I will say, um, one of my favorite, house. YouTube is my favorite website for like following recipes. Super See, I helpful. thought you were going to talk about cooking, honestly. I almost did, but I was like, Have you, you seen know, Binging with Babish? Or Baking with Babish? Yeah. Is that what it's called, Binging with it's, Babish? It's, um, yeah, uh, Binging yeah. with Babish. I think it's now Bab Babish Culinary Universe. He's so good. His videos are so interesting to me. Yeah, he's, we've actually reviewed him before I was here, but he does a... Yeah, I've a really interesting thing where he'll take foods and stuff that are from animated shows, shows and he'll make them in real life. Is what you use for the baseboards? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so we have one. We have one out in the garage. It makes it really easy. So, <laughs> so Kennedy, the one the the and Gordon Ramsay. The review that you've done that really excited me like no other was that stupid one well it was your friend the, the oh defunct land defunct land yeah oh my goodness yeah no it's 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 weird looking at that i have a friend from high school who's like he's got like a couple million subscribers on youtube wow because he he <clears> runs <throat> a channel called <clears throat> defunct land where he just talks about old amusement park ideas and rides and stuff and he talks you know he, he just went on a place i used to work 
Oh, it's yeah. Disney. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. It has a really famous one on Fast Passes and stuff. That's oh, fun. Really oh, well. interesting. That's cool. You ready, Ashley? I am ready when you are. All righty. <clears throat> Now comes the time that at least most of us have been waiting for. Pop Culture Connection, where our producer Ashley asks us questions relating to the world of pop culture. Not only do we have to give Ashley an answer, we have to think of as many reasons for that answer as we can within 30 seconds. And let me just say that, Jonathan, you were called out on a blog. <laughs> Yeah, haters gonna hate. <laughs> haters gonna hate. I have to call bogus on Jonathan's answer. The question was, who is the best TV character and why? And nearly all of his reasons were just listing random facts about the character he picked. <laughs> Not really why Beaver was a good character himself. So, yeah. I'm just saying, mm. Jonathan. Mm. Was that yeah, the day yeah, that I lost? Went... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the day well, everybody it, lost. We it's, all lost it's... to Jonathan. <laughs> It's true, when Satan was kicked out of heaven, he landed in the comment section. Oh, oh man. Goodness wow. Gracious. It was loud. I think that he was, was just telling the truth. All right, yeah, so. There we go. Anyway, on that with the game. On with the game. All right, let's have Kristen go microphone. first. That way you can get it over with, Kristen, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. I knew there was something wrong with this preamp. Oh, you're going to love this one. This is so stress-inducing. You're going to love this one. <laughs> like, don't you're get stressed. This is a good one for you. I might fix it. Especially after what we've just Since talked turning about. turning the knobs, it's okay. changed. What was your favorite book as a kid, and why? Okay, I think I've done this before, but Island of the Blue Dolphins, because yes. I always wanted to be the girl that was left stranded because I always wanted to have a canoe and like learn how to fight for my own survival by foraging for food and making things on my own and like having to kill people if necessary. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but I always wanted to like prove that like I could be stranded and survive like Katniss Everdeen, right? Um, I like loved all the descriptions in the book. Everything was like really vivid as a child. Right. Nice. I was thinking and that sounded a little like someone. A, yeah, exactly. necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little like our time in the plugged in offices. <laughs> oh my god. Well, and you you have had a similar answer. It was a different question yes. though. Okay. So I gave you five points for that. That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Very nice work, Kristen. All right. I thought it was great. A little scary, but great. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe people to survive. Right? I still feel that way, but go ahead. All right, Seven Jonathan. Oh man. Here we go. You got this, buddy. I'll make sure and answer it correctly this time. <laughs> you know. Set the bar high, man. That's right. All right. Would you choose Marvel or DC and why? Ooh. I'm going to choose DC because oh. it all comes down to Superman. I mean, let's just be honest, okay? The guy's got a cape. He's got awesome hair. He's got the, you know, x-ray vision. He's got the, you know, the eyes that can, you know, heat things up. He... You know, can fly. I mean, that's pretty cool. He's stronger than anything else. Everybody you know, tries to, you know, beat him, but nobody really, really can. He came back to life. My like Jesus. Uh, you know, and, you know, he's part of the DC universe. And so, I mean, I think it's better for that reason. Mm, Plus, I don't like he was listing it. some characteristics. And, um, yeah, I think so. Mm. But, you know, You're so I'm good at this, Jonathan. Question. Um, but anyway, so I hope that works. Uh, you know, <laughs> that will work. <laughs> I got nine points for that nine. one. There we nice go. Nine job. points. Nine. Oh but to goodness. be fair, DC is trash compared to Marvel. Right. <laughs> wow. So watch out, Kristen will kill you if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't share my opinion. That's right. Take care. <laughs> All right, Kennedy. Yeah, I'll pull my teeth. You're next. All right, here we go. Your question is ah, oh, this is quite fitting as well. What do you consider to be the best YouTube channel, excluding the Plugged In channel, of course? Of course. Of course. And why? Uh, so I would probably choose, uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> shoot, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with CGP Grey. I recently reviewed him, and I've really come to really like him. He does a lot of really obscure topics. Uh, he talks about all these weird things, like, who owns the Statue of Liberty? Who, uh, how does the interstate code system work? It's just really obscure topics that really get you, and his animation style is really great. He's really cool, and he's got a great speaking voice. I know that's past <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I love how much thought he put into it. He's like, no, I gotta have the right wait, answer. Wait, right. wait. Well, That's he does awesome. it the right way, John. Yes. He does. Um, That's right. He, he won't get slammed in the comments <laughs> by Alex. <laughs> Never spoken that fast uh, in my life. Four <laughs> points, Kennedy. Good job. I worked job. for those four points. You did. I think it deserved extra extra points myself, but all right, Paul. Let's go, Paul. Let's see. I know you can do this. <sighs> Nine to no points to beat. Oh my goodness. You've got it's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh, all right. Why? Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> I, just, I just I can't see thank it happening. You. It might. <laughs> I think Paul's got this in the bag. You ready? You're stuck in a remote forest with only your wits to survive. Oh, Which it. fictional character do you want to have with you and why? Indiana Jones, James T. Kirk, Laura Croft, Dora the Explorer, or someone of your own choosing? Oh, I'm going to choose Samwise Gamgee. We were just talking about it before we started. <laughs> Sam is the best person because he has that cool little rope that can get us out of tight spots. He hunts rabbits. He's very giving, very thoughtful. When you run into a bad traveling companion, he's very watchful over that companion. If you wind up falling down as you're climbing up to Mount Doom, he will actually physically carry you, and then he will go back and eventually raise a garden. It's, it's a really great character. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Seven, Seven. Seven points. Oh, yes. Jonathan. I think Jonathan, Jonathan practices. When, I think he does. He's just here. too good. Did you, <laughs> did you <laughs> give him all of the no. questions? Uh, yeah. No. It's because I answer the questions wrong, folks. That's why. <laughs> That's why. Oh, man. Such bitterness. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today as we covered YouTube and books and a few things in between. And to give you a very special thank you. And, and to give you a very special thank you, we'd like to give you Jonathan McKee's excellent book, Parenting Generation Screen. Just send us a gift of any amount and tell us you'd like a copy. And if you want to read more about what we've talked about today, tell our show, or <laughs> tell our show notes. <laughs> and if you want to read about more about, la, 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 la. And if you want to read more about what we talked about today, check our show notes for the episode as well as the plugged in blog. And of course, connect us and of course, connect with us through Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Can you start from end of course? And of course, connect with us through it's Facebook a and Instagram. Better. <laughs> Thanks again for inviting us into your day. We hope you'll do so again next week on the Plugged In Show. Um, can you? We hope you'll do so. We hope you'll do so again next week on the Plugged In Show. Thanks. You threw a random and in I the know. middle of a sentence. I know. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Good job. Mm -hmm. Who's coming in now? <coughs> this is coming Excuse in now. Me, big. Hey, Kristen, did you want to stick around just in case you want to stop? Oh, I'm not moving. Uh, then, Jonathan, are you good or do you need to go ahead and do peers? I think. Um, it's it's up to you. Are you guys you guys are doing just an interview with Hoops, or yes. are you doing? So it's not with the, it's not with the whole team. It'll be primarily Hoops, but people can okay. chime in if they want. Okay. Yeah, you, you you call it and I'll do it. I do have a, I got a hard stop in in about twenty minutes and change. Oh, uh, we'll um, be done by then for sure. Cool. Okay. For sure. All right. Okay. Yes. Hi. Hey. So, so Ash, Ash, and Laura, should I just should we line another time for me to do peers then? Because if they. How many of you have to do? I think we're all right. I'll just, just sit right here at this mic and we're ready to go. We does might that, be able to get this done. Work? Are we good, Laura? Do, do we need anybody to leave? If you want them all there, you can have them all there. <laughs> I'm not. Well, you have to be here because he's going to ask you questions, so you yeah. might as well stay. I've got a question. Okay. Throw in any comments you want. <laughs> I, I think we'll <laughs> be saw. able to get to at least one of them. No. Miter saws are really out. great. They are. Out. Let's see what they are. Yeah. If loads of kids are. Blah, 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 blah. If loads of kids are watching YouTube, fewer are reading books. According to the Pew Research Center, the number of kids who read for fun is dropping. It's at its lowest level since the mid-1980s. Mm. Uh, but our own book review section on our site is actually one of the most popular sections on our entire website. Because we have the best we readers. We do have <laughs> the best readers, and we review sometimes the best books. Some goodies, yeah. And I wanted to talk with you about one of them that you just reviewed that made a powerful uh, impression on you. Yes. Oh. It's called Out of My Mind. Out of My Mind. Is it Out of Your Heart? 
Oops. Actually, that, this is the sequel to Out of My Mind. I mean, it really is. No, I'll start back. It's... <laughs> Yeah. No, but I mean, really, the first sequel, book is yes. out of my mind, and uh, okay, fine. It's... Uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's great. That's a great outcome. It's called Out of My Heart by uh, Sharon Draper. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, it's it's a wonderful little book. You know, you, we were talking. You, you guys were talking about YouTube and all the time kids are spending on YouTube. One way to help curb that is give them a good book like this. Mm -hmm. Something that they can sit down and and either read themselves or you can read it with them. And it's that kind of book that that kids and parents will enjoy. Now, you, when I tell you the subject matter, you're going to say, hmm, because it's <laughs> essentially it's about this. Um, this young girl who has cerebral palsy, and in her case, 12-year-old Melody, it, it means that she doesn't have very much um, movement in terms of control of her body, so she's wheelchair-bound, and, uh, and she can't talk. So she has to communicate through what, what is called a meditalker, where she types in whatever she wants to say or communicate. And the story is essentially about her wanting to go to camp this one summer. Now, as I said, people could listen to that and say, mm, "Really? I don't know." But the fact is that it's it's a the author has done this great job of helping us connect with who Melody is and how she thinks, and she's very funny and she's very personable. You really care about this young girl, and you really see that for her, things like stepping into a pool or being carried into a pool or or riding down a zip line. Are terrifying, mm -hmm. and because she's never done anything like this, and even the even the idea of trying to make her very first friend is a big challenge. But I'll tell you, it turns into this fabulous story. It really you you can't help but empathize with this particular character and see something from a different perspective. Yeah, and that's one of the beauties of books, right? Is, yeah. is they can make you, in a way that I don't think any other form of media really can do, it can make you really empathize, really care about the character at its core. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know why books are able to do that so well. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I think it's because it's not something visual. Mm -hmm. It's something mental. Mm -hmm. Where they stir something up where you can connect with it mentally. And, and as I said, Sharon Draper does a fabulous job with this book. Um, I think it's, and, and, and it's, you know, I've mentioned kids and adults. The fact is, when I was reading it, I was also reading it as a parent. Mm -hmm. And from that perspective, man... There were moments in this book that became so emotional, and, it, and it's it's so it's funny, it's exciting, and emotional in this little story about a young girl. Now, are there problems that parents need to watch out for? You know, not really, mm -hmm. not really. I, it, there's no language, there's n no sexuality or anything like that. Th there are there are attractions between girls and boys. You know, but it's it's all kept fairly, it's all kept very innocent and very sweet. In fact, just the idea for Melody, just the idea that a boy, and there is this young boy who is sort of interested in her, just the very fact that he wants to talk to her is like this mountaintop experience, yeah. you know, yeah. and... And we are so invested in her that we feel it too. Yeah. So, Kennedy, you've done a few book reviews as well for us. I have. Since we've been talking about YouTube, we're talking about books, is there something that books bring to the party that YouTube just can't? Of course. I think, I mean, I think that's true with any medium, but with books in particular, you know, you see there's a certain amount of engagement that a reader will get. Um, with their imagination, mm -hmm. uh, reading a book yeah. rather than YouTube. I mean, obviously, YouTube is a video format. There's not much left, you know. You can't really <laughs> imagine much else. But when you're reading a book, it really helps to engage your own, your your brain, your thinking. So, in yeah, addition, yeah, we've even seen that it even helps yeah. children fall asleep at night. Uh, contrast that with <laughs> watching better. a screen just before bed. Uh, it was found to decrease a child's nightly sleep average yeah. by 20 minutes. Which no parent wants, by the way. 
<laughs> we want our kids to but stay. I'll tell you, a lot of those things that he just listed are all great for adults as well. Yeah, of course. You know, I mean, the fact is that we as we adults sometimes think, well, I don't need to read as much anymore. I'm not in school. But the fact, the, the more we are connected with good books, mm -hmm. the more it, it helps our own cognitive abilities and, our, and strengthens our, our minds. Well, there's a direct link to depression and anxiety with social media yeah. and with technology in general. So, of course, it's really important to... I love reading, and I might not want to watch a really long YouTube video, but I would much prefer for me to read. But it's because I started when I was younger, and I had yeah. a deep connection to the characters that I read, and it was, like, very formative. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting what reading does, does to you, I think, because... Uh, it's a harder thing for me to get into personally because it's active, right? Yes. So much of, of yes. the other media that we deal with is passive. You sit down, mm -hmm. you absorb it, that's it. Right. Reading, you have to sit down and you almost lean forward to it. So it requires a little bit more to get into, but there's nothing better. I would say there's like a lot of fun ways to like engage kids. Like I, because I really love reading, and so it might be hard if you're not passionate about it, but um, I take my kids and we go to this like one bookshop basically and I let them go pick out a few books that they want and we talk about it and so we have a huge collection at home that some of them are reserved for like Christmas only like I'm a very big believer that we don't read Christmas books at, when it's not Christmas but <laughs> like like it might be a fun thing where like you could also make it a tradition right like we do this at this time and so you can kind of yeah go from there yeah yeah thanks so much guys